All right. Here we are again. Perception Productions would like to welcome hometown bridge town hero. <laughs> my good friend, my brother from another mother, Buddha man. Greetings, brother. Welcome. Bless. Thank you for being here. So me and Buddha man, we go back quite a ways from uh, the first day I met him was at the Point of Hills Mall. <laughs> yeah. And we happened to apply for the, well, we applied for the same job and we were there at the same job interview. Yep. And it, it was for some market research, like MK Ultra <sighs> mind control, <laughs> like a steg analysis, semiotic fucking. Uh, mind, yeah, for sure. Mind control, the colors, the yellow, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the yellow red walls. Oh, Uh, yeah, even inside was a form of, like, trying to get lure you in. And uh, we would show people commercials, have them taste products. Um, Just basically, we were killers of your time. Yeah, pretty much. And, and, like, enders of the enjoyment of your Sunday or whatever for, uh, in return for, like, a measly 2 or $3. Two bucks, yeah. (laughs) What do you think the highest surveys were? Like, maybe, like, five bucks? I mean, the average, average was probably five bucks yeah. right and then uh but we did have some some like the occasionals where they'd pay like 50 yeah. 100 bucks but those are those like you had to meet those requirements and the demographic was and, small and they would always like call their family yeah like those were always like for your family they were spoken for yeah, yeah exactly yeah but uh oh, good it, times. it was the first day and i remember you you were in there uh you know i just seen i was like oh shit is is hopefully this guy's not my competition you know yeah but we were already basically hired you know oh yeah for sure especially that first day yeah like it was uh were the interviews no that was we were because was it an interview because i know they hired on the spot it was an interview huh i think they hired on the spot no i don't remember they told you that day though that you got hired because i know i got hired on the spot when i did the interview oh yes but when i saw you you were you were all clean cut dressed dressed to impress (laughs) You know, looking all suave. Uh, and so I don't know if that was the interview. It was the interview, yeah, because yeah, so I yeah, got hired that day. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, that's pretty funny. So they were like, they probably liked the, the bullshit we fed them. Oh, on, yeah. On the, oh, for sure. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I remember you had, like, your headphones, and they were, like, falling out and stuff. <laughs> and, like, um, I could hear the music you were listening to, and it was, like, uh, I, I'm sure it was, like, a mix of things on your iPod. Oh, for was sure. It, it was, was probably it? an iPod or a Zoom. iPod, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah one of Zoom, those. people yeah, Zoom, Zooms? Yeah. And uh, it was um, a Gwen Stefani song. Awesome. You, Which one? Um, if it, it was... Uh, it was like the TikTok one or some shit. Uh, like, you know? the, the, the one with the, the lavish one. Or, <clears throat> how does it go? Uh, the, TikTok, TikTok. That one, right? Na, 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 na. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> yeah, but, I, I don't know. I, but it was just like... Yeah, it was just, just, just kind of, yeah, it was yeah. random, yeah. yeah. I was like, is this guy into this kind of yeah. stuff? Like, well, one, it was probably <laughs> Lorraine's iPod <laughs> that, I, that I broke that I'm probably, I'll probably hear about. And so, <laughs> that was the one, that was so long ago. Yeah. And so, there was a lot of Gwen, uh, what else was on there, different, like Maxwell. And, uh, you were, like, getting yourself pumped up. Oh, up on bro, I, I, I dug in <laughs> some cranberries, you know. <laughs> some linger yeah yeah <laughs> so but that was cool though like we both um ended up getting the job and we uh we basically like took to each other pretty fast we were, oh yeah like we became pretty cool we both realized like we we're both artists musicians and stuff and especially we, that i think once that came into play it was like oh bro yeah yeah what's up I and think, it was and it was for both of us it was like in the beginning stages of of that and like trying to like push to be who we want to become more oh for sure you know? I, I remember um I remember you telling me that's kind of when you were stepping away from a, a certain band or a certain style of music and doing your own yeah and kind of like cause I remember asking well, what type of music you play you're like Psh. 
you know, I'm not going to label myself. Like, I don't know, like <laughs> whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. And, um, that was when I was taking my, my hip hop serious and like really trying to be an, be a real artist and not just freestyling and, you know, seen as a, a, a not, it wasn't as a, it wasn't a hobby anymore. It was, yeah. it was my life. It was like, okay, this is who I am. This is, you know, this is Making what I'm going to do. something uh, tangible. Yeah, it, yeah, right? for yeah. sure. <clears throat> I remember I did my, my whole room and made it, uh, made half of the room, the, the, yeah, the, the, vo- the, yeah. the, the vocal booth and yeah, stuff. That was and cool. like, it was uh, a good time, a good time of music for sure. I always thought that was cool. Like, you know, cause we were both DIY, especially in that time period, yeah. you know, we still are, you know, yeah. but, but in that time period we we're like, I like, I was setting my room up to like, uh, to do my little studio and all that. And then you did the same thing. So I was like, that's cool. I, I respect that kind of, these kind of people and these artists and stuff like that. So what version of Pro Tools were we at at that time? I think it was uh, seven, eight. It was like eight or nine. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. like, you know, come on, man. We, we, it was, it was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a, uh, you bought that one or you I had like an ascent, I had like an essential basic Pro Your Tools. homie got it for you, right? I I, you yes, were... eventually I, I got a different program, but a, originally it was the Essentials kit that came with the, the, the keyboard. Mm. And it was like, all right, let's press record and go. Yeah. And I, man, I was like barely uh, developing my guitar skills and shit like that too. Like, I remember going to your pad and we didn't even have, like, we were barely learning how to, like, make like yeah. beats and shit yeah. like that too so we like we would just do s- songs with just the guitar yep and and you would flow over yep. it, then i'd make a fucking a hook to it but then we kind of developed that and actually like did the same thing but we just added drums yeah. later on yeah. and stuff like that and became cool you know that was that was kind of part of the that, style that was know? like our uh, the beginning um uh, you know like you said the D- diy uh musician life because bro you have to you had to edit your stuff you had to record yourself you know you, you had, had to film go, like your own video yeah. or whatever remember yeah. we would push our own cds yeah man like yeah t- uh, man, talk about that a little bit okay so th- i think all right so now what year were we at and those were, we don't you and i together maybe just to uh briefly touch on that you and i together did like maybe like two or three songs or something at that yeah, time at that time we're looking and at you and you had like your own that you did yes i had my own and then we would even like put our songs together yeah and then we would like make our own mixtape yeah like that was um was that before or after the the first show we did oh speaking of that i have something for you what you got there brother <clears throat> The original flyers for that oh, show. Oh, dude. dude, my dog! Dude, I love it. Awesome. I, oh, Keep I love that. it. Thank you. I, I, I'm gonna laminate it. I love laminate. MySpace.com. <laughs> oh, I, I love this it. this was uh, we we played a show. The first Keep show we the played video. together, and it was uh at Hot Topic, it, um, at the point of okay, Hills 2010. Mall. I knew it was 2010. Because we were both working at the mall at the time, so we were able to hustle a. Uh, a show at yeah. Hot Topic, <laughs> and looking back at it, that's pretty. That's pretty impressive for an in-store for, for some for an indie artist. Yeah, come on, dog. Hell yeah, yeah, man. yeah. It was cool. It was fun. Most of now now kids are gonna have to pay pay to play there, probably. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, Point Hills Mall, what Thursday, July twenty second, twenty ten. Free show CDs and stuff. Oh, bro, <laughs> that's space. so awesome. But yeah, I love it. Thank so. you, man. I appreciate that. I have my um, my original interface from those days. I still have. It's not compatible, so but but I still have it, and it has your uh, sound of perception sticker. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's awesome. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I appreciate dude. that. That was no a problem, good one. Dude. Get so, over here. So um, <clears throat> you were saying about the the gig also. Okay, right? so that we're 2010, we become friends. We're making music together, and I believe after that it was like, oh man, like we gotta really, we gotta really do this. And um, we did a show in Ontario. Remember that oh, gangster yeah. rap? It was <laughs> nothing but <a> gangster <laughs> rappers. Bro, that's my favorite story. All right, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. There's a lot. There's a lot to unpack in, in those <laughs> yeah. in that beginning stages of our friendship. 
and uh, our music too, because like, oh, okay. So before the CD pushing, or maybe around the same time, you know, okay, we, you know, we sold our CDs at high school swap meets, the malls, anywhere wherever, you think of, yeah. wherever it had to. That's it was how like, it was basically like yes. like these kind of CDs. Yes, I would literally write out all the song names. Yes. And Old you would do the same, shit, same right? thing, yeah. same thing. I remember you stepped it up with the stickers and like <laughs> your your market your marketing skills were off the bat, off, <laughs> uh, uh, on it. And so, okay, so we're pushing, we're really pushing, our, we're believing ourselves, we're pushing our music. And I think a friend of mine had a, a, a MC contest. You know, you you you, you put up a, uh, some bread and then you got to sell the tickets and then <clears> everybody gets a, a, a chance for the prize. Looking back at it, you know probably a scam but hey it was my my first you know gig as, after that after the the bunch <laughs> of health health one. Scam. yeah yeah hey man gotta get your bread yeah. right and so i invited you to play with me and it was um the same deal you know like okay we got to put up some bread i remember it was like ah uh, i don't think it's gonna work bro <laughs> and it was like ah whatever you know uh put up what i do have because he ended up let me just give me the money, guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's the microphone. And so that night, uh, we're, we had our family, friends there. It was Ontario. Nothing but gangster rappers. My <laughs> backpack hip-hop, hip-hop and ass. Uh, rapping it to my wife. You know, love yeah. songs and, and a, a rapping about my story and my life. And then you just have, you know, a different vibe. And then my man comes in with your brother. Uh, uh, we didn't have a, a mic stand. I think your brother had to hold the microphone. Oh shit! And so, bro, I <laughs> yeah, tell my kids man. this the story every time Crazy comes on the radio. You had your Lokes on, singing CeeLo's "Crazy" or Narles Barkley. Make make me crazy. Me crazy, killing it, killing it like the whole no drums, club. just the electric yeah. guitar. Yeah, yeah. just getting it dude oh my god and i was like yeah and you saw you saw everyone having a good time too and that sound like i wasn't sure if it was gonna like go over but they, they it went over yeah it, i remember cool. I, I remember the owner like hey man you guys got it and like da 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 <laughs> i and my wife and everything too but still like you know um, <laughs> definitely giving that that hey you guys are performers especially in a in a place that wasn't our market yeah but we, we were still able to do it yeah had a damn good time i always i mean i i kind of always felt that it, you could go anywhere really and it, if you make one new friend at the gig then yeah. that's like oh, bro. brick by brick you dude, killed you it you know what i mean oh, thank like, you for saying that you know oh, yes. ryan cohen <laughs> uh, yeah but that was fun dude and then there's like a situation out back when my mom like oh, yeah. fucking hit this guy's car, but then he was parked in a fucking no. You're not supposed to park there. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't supposed to park there. Uh, that, that was that was crazy. It yeah. was an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> that night was an adventure for sure. And then there was, uh, but yeah, we would uh, go around the the mall, and and me and Robert Budaman would be just like. <clears throat> man, I feel like a hamster on a wheel. And, oh man, and, and that it, yeah. Oh dude, because we'd just needs... be going around in circles trying to like go up to people and 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 basically like hustle them, even though we were paying them. So it wasn't that bad, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if we were trying to convince them to buy fucking like steak knives that they don't need, then that'd be kind of more fucked up. But but still, we knew we had to like infiltrate their brains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, but it did kind of like, I always kind of viewed it as like a, a means to kind of get me out of my shell. Cause I was kind of sure. during that period, I was more like kind of battling traumas and shit like that. And, and then, uh, so that kind of helped me get back out, you know? For sure. And I think it, um, it definitely, you were able to use your kind of like, like people, um, energy and like to be able to get them to come do studies to like oh, you and sure. i never had problems with that never really, you know? never unless we didn't want to do it yeah that was the i think the only time i ever had any problems when i didn't want to be there and it was like speaking of which i saw sam yesterday oh did you <laughs> Bless up, Sam. <laughs> um uh yeah anytime i didn't want to be there I, I was usually hungover 
oh, or yeah. uh, <laughs> just not just just low low enthusiasm. I don't want to do anything. Oh, did you get any studies? Oh no. Oh, go ahead, go try some more. Well, it's part of it was the way uh, the hut would treat us. Oh, for sure. Especially uh, any any company culture. If you're gonna treat your employees bad, they're gonna treat your the they're time not, yeah, the time bad. Like yeah. that's not good leadership. No, you know? not at all. Good leader encourages and yeah. you know. Remember we go play uh, Marvel vs. Capcom? Yeah, I was about to talk about that too. Yeah, we would fucking yes. go go to GameWorks yes. when that shit was at the mall during during our time, and we'd play uh, Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah. Yep. Go outside, smoke. It's like <laughs> we're gonna you, we're gonna take we're gonna take our time back, and that's crazy. Yeah, we're that's take crazy our time now. Back. And look at fast forward now. We're trying to fight for our time back, fight for our freedom. Yeah. Our quality of our quality of life. That shit's crazy. But yes, what you're saying about the hamster on the wheel, like that was our first I think that first um realization of life. Well society living, that domesticated living, consumerism, spending, 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 spending. Uh everything's right in front of us. And mem- uh, remember we made that track? Yeah. And yeah. we should do an insert like here. <laughs> and then um the rabbit hole, like that was that everything was right there yeah and that um, you had that line about um they all flock to the mall buying up this, these clothes yeah yeah, yeah man A secret inside insecurity growth <laughs> <laughs> so Ready conscious to hide what nobody knows yes <laughs> yeah and uh but um the truth now i think now look at fast forward today you have your um your woke generation look at the malls are falling bro they're empty uh, across America, yeah, you have your popping places that people are always going to shop and flock to. Yeah, but the mall itself, the model of a of a super mall, yeah. that's dead, bro. It is yeah. dead, vacant lots, parking lots now. That's Office crazy. space. That that is crazy, dude. I I was there the other day because they have a GNC there, you know. Oh, nice. Get so, your subs. <laughs> so I went in, um, because they they give you like a thing for your birthday. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I went in and um. And I was, like, looking around. There was a lot of closed places. Even, like, the Cinnabon that used to be right there, it was closed down. And I'm just looking. The Remember we'd always get, like, free samples from oh, yeah. that, like, pretzel place? Oh, that yeah. place was closed. Um, they would get pissed, too. Huh? Yeah. Like, we, yeah. We'd get free samples. It's like, yeah. We'd, we'd just grab them. Yep. <laughs> the almond. I like the almond-crusted ones. Yeah. Those are the whip. You would find ways to just kill time. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I agree with you. It's It's... In a, in a way, it's, like, sad. For then, sure. Uh, but, in the, I mean, because I don't feel that all these people, maybe, like, that they stop consuming. I feel like maybe just their, where they consume. Yeah, it's all it's Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Bro, let's be real here. Yeah. Amazon <laughs> rules us. Um, At the same time, dude, it's like, okay, yeah, like, um, it's so convenient or whatever, but... I don't know if I want to buy a hat. I like to try it out and shit. Okay, you know what I mean, like especially uh, your local your local hat vendor. Like, bro, I, I stitched this hat myself. Yeah, you know, you you you're exchanging it's an energy exchange. So you, there's um yeah, but we need to be in the middle of that for sure. Yeah, and I think with certain purchases, you're gonna have that in the store. You want to try on your shoes. Yeah, you want to exactly. try on your hat, like you said. Um, and but you want to see how it looks and feels and everything. You know, e-commerce, bro, groceries. Look at Instacart, uh, grocery shopping. It's it's we're in that age now. That digital age of e-commerce is now not a alternative. It is now a pri- like a primary. Yeah, you know, and it's um now it feels like even even shopping for food though. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I I wouldn't buy my meat, you know, off. Yeah, off they're they're choosing the the meat for me. You know? you know what I mean? It's like. They're uh, gonna give me. They're for sure gonna give me the fucking ones that are older and. You but know see, what I mean? you know, and then I um, I saw this coming. Like I used to work. I used to work at the at at, at Target distribution. And, uh, oh yeah, I remember that. And so around that time, and I left that job. I left the mall to go to the retail store. Left the retail store to go to the distribution. So I saw, I in a way I've kind of followed the trends of retail, you know throughout my life yeah and so now i'm kind of taking it in now now i'm not in that type of uh career mode and i'm like wow 
holy crap, like this is, I, I saw it all happening to get here to where now we're inflated prices of, of, of goods and uh, decaying business models. You know, but I saw the, like, I guess the transition or everybody trying to transition to an e-commerce mode. But those stores like Target, Walmart, they're still doing well though, right? Well, uh, like, they did very well during this pandemic. For, for sure. But I think even they have, they have to face with the decision, you know, retail stores, theft, uh, prices, like yeah. you're going to start seeing them cut in half. I feel because of e-commerce being the primary yeah because you, now you got to think of well, they, they take all that shit into consideration like yeah. theft and all that because yeah. um i kind of feel like uh, most of the their overhead of what they're spending is on employees and yeah. stuff like that you know so if they're able to cut some employees out and put those machines for self-checkout but everyone like it's it's like they say like uh, the self checkout when you see that that means I'm paying for some shit and I'm not paying for some shit you know what I mean, but that loss that they're taking is probably still less than paying for fucking an employee. Yeah, that's why they do it, right? Yeah, it's gonna happen. That's why they I guarantee they did okay, but not as well as what they're accustomed to and yeah. how much they've yeah. been losing or c- certain areas. You know, you, you got to think of in that scale. They're they're just trying to but they lose did well. Money. They did well because the like people are small well all the small businesses started oh, yeah. closing oh bro and then yeah. they were the only ones that were able to be open for sure uh look we're pretty much living in demolition times demolition um demolition de- demolition man times <laughs> remember uh only one only one oh, franchise yeah. survived the restaurant wars what, yeah. re- what restaurant was that taco, taco bell. bell and so <laughs> bro you know I, I we could bounce around on this a lot because this is what we're living and uh but yeah I saw I saw somebody get chased out for stealing a loaf of bread at 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 at, a, at, a gro- at my grocery store recently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Recently, I saw that that um, realization. That's really nice. At that point, I would just pay for that for that person. And man. I oh. I uh, one I scolded the employee like, "Oh, hey, bro, like that's not your bread. Why are you?" And he was telling the dude, "Is it? Were, were you that hungry?" Like, obviously, yeah, bro. He yeah. was that hungry. <laughs> and so when I when it hit me there, people are desperate. People don't give a fuck. You're gonna have mental illness, drugs, all that in the mix. It's it's gonna get it's it's well, it's, that, it's already weird. That shot up too, you know, uh, like alcohol and drugs. The past, like the pandemic, and, uh, all that. and that's always good for business. So in, in all those way, factors, how? all those factors. When you have people, you have all this happening. You're gonna keep consuming. You know, that's good for business in a sense, and that's what I mean as far as the bigger sense. They're gonna start shutting down stores. They're gonna they're gonna increase uh, or decrease their their overhead. You know, like we were saying. But yeah, that's um, that's the bad part. And I'm like, I I don't like what I'm seeing. You know? It's yeah, it's it's crazy too that like in this time period, uh, I guess there's a lot of people are trying to escape a lot of escapism and all that and. Um, you and I happened to like st- stop drinking and all that during that time period. Basically, you a little bit before me, but it's all pre- I think prepared us, you know, for it. <clears throat> Serious, like, ooh. well, it's like like I kind of analyze that a little bit. Fucking like life has always been kind of chaotic for me and stuff. You know, maybe for you too. It seems like hundred percent agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like when this hit it wasn't like oh my god all oh, like like dude now everybody's just kind of like living what i lived and yes. shit and i was now that like everybody else is kind of at that same level i i don't feel like uh, an outcast good point so then i'm like okay i could handle this shit and and like i i feel like it was a good year like yeah. spiritually oh bro you know bless I mean? yeah bless 2020 uh, to 2021, it's been amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's probably it's probably been my best year as an adult. You know, I you know I've been sober and stuff, and that that just helped helped me with the that whole the whole year and and uh, blessings and getting closer to doing like that the freedom that you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, no, I feel you there. Um, and, and that, okay, so. We went through all that, like I said. I saw all that. Uh, the 
you know, the decay of that business model. And as an employee, seeing everything go in a way, you, you, I already kind of knew there's no place for me, for my creativity, for my energy, all these different modes. I wasn't a good fit. Yeah. And so now that I'm kind of tossed aside, now I'm seeing it for the bigger picture. Now I'm like, oh, wow, I, I, this is freedom. You know, you have to fight for that, bro. Yeah. It's yeah. there for us, but um, I got I got lost I, I lost my, my my train of thought. It's like finding ways to like hustle and, and uh, you know what I yeah. mean. Yeah, uh, but when you were talking about the the initial pandemic being a uh, like oh hey now you know how now you know how it feels like bro <laughs> that's and that. a lot of people weren't used to that no yeah uh, it's think scary of, to them dude think of people that never lost their job before. Uh, people that have never had a worry about rationing their food or any of that or type like, of like, living. Like if you, yeah, if you don't have enough, like where are you going to go get some like free food? Yeah. That's just shit like probably that we already like grew up knowing and stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so, and um, that's, um, I was talking to a friend of mine too, my homie DC. I, w- I was touching how most of these issues, it's a poverty thing. It's not race. Yeah. It's, really, it's not the color of your skin. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, like, your uh, generational uh, bank account. <laughs> yeah, you could call it class. Yes, like class yes. Them, whatever you know. Yes, let's just keep it. That's 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 simpler. Hundred percent. And so now, from in my experience, it was like you said. I'm I'm used to the chaos. I'm this is cool. Uh, the pandemic, all the lockdowns. That was uh, a perfect time for me because I was going through some crazy shit at that time. Cool. I'd have to worry about my own my own issues because I had to take care of my family. You know, <laughs> crazy pandemic. Yeah. You know, I, oh yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Don't uh, don't need to worry about the the trauma that I was enduring at that time, which was there's getting hurt, bigger, losing my job, yeah. having the realization of what who am I in this world, and it was like, well, put that put a pause on that, and then it was like um, a, a a nice breath of fresh air because i it, i was being who i was a protector you're being that pillar yeah I'm, I'm i'm a man you know i'm 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 providing i'm i'm taking care of my family you know this is i was re- i got real deep in my ancestors you know like thinking of how how they would be and what they would do and that's just how i felt oh yeah you know especially in, in getting uh once once i got sober i started reading and so remember i gave you the papa vu the like the mayan bible Oh yeah, and so that kind of really put put me in that thinking, and I'm just like, oh my god, you know, like there's just so much truth in 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 in, in, um, in this ancient in, in the ancients, and yeah. so I really put myself in that position, and, and like put my put, put put myself in that place of what my ancestors would do, and then that brings up all the questions: what what did you do wrong? So now I'm I'm gonna do it right. That makes sense. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now it's uh, I feel like in a sense that you're here, they did right, but the fact that we're not where we could be, yes, is is gener- uh, ancestral generational kind of like curses that we need to break 100%. And, and all that. A hundred percent. And so now this whole time, I definitely had enough time to sit and sit with that. And myself, my place, everything. And it's, um, I think now that it's kind of died down, I've had the light sh- on me, bro, on those few little uh, challenges that I, I talked about in the beginning that I kind of put to the side. So now it's like I have to do the real work. And like I'm, I'm faced with that. And that's cool. I'm, I'm okay with the uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And what it, what is it that you're... Um at that point that you're the the work that you're uh trauma uh when all that when everything happened i got hurt i'm still hurt well you know i don't want to sound like a victim (laughs) but i was a victim of injustice by uh you know my my job and that that district and so with losing the job so traumatic in that traumatic way and everything that i put in all the the faith that I put into that position and that identity, yeah, lo- having it ripped away 
being <clears throat> having a constant reminder of it with my my injury and not being 100 percent with my body yeah you know mentally as well i feel that too man it's, it, uh, it's a bummer and uh, the, one uh, of the last um uh, warehouse jobs that i had or whatever i was like i'd go in there this is right before i went to rehab and stuff um but I, i'd go there initially like really kind of trying to work hard so that they could uh like consider me and keep me and all that kind of stuff and it's it's a it's a scam. It's another scam, and they're just like using your body. And, oh yeah, and you're expendable. You're just a vessel to them that they're gonna milk as hard. And if they don't like you, if they look uh, disregard you, or they have any kind of judgments on you, because you know it's a certain type of it's a certain type of person, people in there and stuff. You know, a lot of a lot of haters and shit, and uh, they definitely hated the fact that i had extracurricular activities like i was you know doing something else doing something else and and that i had like potential to get out of there that kind of thing they they fucking hated that and they would always try to um fuck me like and use me as hard as they can so i started like going to work drunk all the time you know what i mean and uh, I would drink in the parking lot before, and I would take uh, little shooters, and I'd put them in my pocket, and I would, as I'm driving the, the cherry picker, I'd be, like, drinking them and stuff. Oh, One time they even found them in someone else's trash bag, but it was, like, the, the forklift I used yeah. the day before. Yeah. And they were, like, throwing it out, and they oh, were, bro. like, what the hell? Whose are these? And I was, like, like inside I was laughing. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. But they, you know. Um, the guy was like, it wasn't mine. And they tried to read it, like, on uh, who checked it out. Sheet? But I would always scribble my yeah. name, you know what yeah. I mean? So, like, um, not putting, not putting, not putting my name on this one. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was kind of, a, it was a dark time. I was drinking, obviously, like that before there, because I was I've fucking miserable, dude. And, um. I was there. And, yeah, right, I started drinking hard like that after it was like, okay, it was already six months and they're supposed to hire you. And oh what they God, made us do was switch to a different agency. So then your time starts all over again. And I was like, dude, screw this. So then now I'm like seeing all these places that I'd say, like, if I ever need to go back to that kind of thing, for instance, like what they're paying you, I'm like, dude, I'll just work at fucking McDonald's for yeah. like a few bucks less yeah. and, and with minimal responsibility yeah. kind of thing yeah. instead of like breaking my back for these motherfuckers. Oh yeah, and, bro. Yeah. Like that, that, I believe that's, that's over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. like, it yeah. doesn't make sense to do that, that hard for what they pay. You know oh bro. I mean? Even when they pay you fat, like at the distribution that you describe my environment too. Yeah. Writing a PE, same thing, you know, fucked up, not caring, and uh, they paid well. That was uh, that was more though. That was deeper hurt. For most, I think that that's okay. Like they paid enough to be treated like shit. And they'll take it because they, uh, if you don't pay your employees well, and and you treat them like shit, bro. Oh, bro come on. Yeah. Yeah, but no, you. It gave me kind of like I felt a little uncomfortable with the way you described it. Like you, you pretty much described my entire. Not, uh, I think like 2016, 2017. Yeah, that was my 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 downfall. Yeah, man. That was. Woo. So, yeah, I, woo. I understand. It got bad. Yeah, yeah. And then just, I was like, um, I was just doing stupid shit at that time. Like I, I had this like juxtaposition like where I'd be like training all the time I'd be doing like jujitsu before um, before going into that job and then I'd be doing like Muay Thai and all that like on other like some of the other days or weekends or whatever and then it was like okay I'm doing that but then I'm getting like fucked up I'm training and then I'm like getting fucked up right before work yeah. like like my, my drinking days became at work you know what I that mean? That was your downtime. Like, that was my downtime for me. Fuck. Like, getting drunk at work because I didn't have any other time to fucking oh, do bro. it. And it was just like, and it was fucking fun. miserable, dude. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, It'll catch you, too. Oh, man. And you don't even know how long it's going by. It's like, what? Wait, how long have I been doing this? I had I had gone in to that, that job like three months sober, two or three months sober, and I was like, 
for me that was a long time already and then i was like i started drinking in there with coworkers. we would go at, at lunch and then it, it was dude like the fucking parking lot everybody would be oh, like bro. doing meth fucking drinking smoking weed did you work at target distribution center too <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Fuck. dude i'd be like almost getting in fights with people because people like would talk shit you know and like oh bro and i'd you be got like that low that low frequency everybody's yeah, just man. like it's like animalistic yeah, and man. i'm like dude i'm not gonna put up with this shit yeah so bro that's unhealthy like, no let's fucking go and then then they'd back down and stuff you know what i mean damn but it's it's just like imagine like I'm like dude I ain't trying to go to work to like fill this you know what I mean like it, so after that I that's when I like checked into a little bit after a few months later you know but I checked in and, and yeah, I'm done <laughs> yeah man is uh, surrendered yeah fuck it was like it, it was like that last year that was just like really fucking hard in oh that bro shit, dude, like, right and I know for you too man yeah you, you and oh me, yeah you and me both had those moments and stuff you know and that's everybody's everybody's gonna go through that journey if they're you know however whenever they want to look at it they can probably see it for themselves too yeah i feel if if you if you really want to get down to it because you know we're just all starting a different start points whatever but you have to hit your bottom yeah. everyone has a bottom i uh first time i tried to get sober i thought it was my bottom Went to Vegas to shoot a, a, a wedding. It was relapse. You know? It was just one time, you know? Good. I can just drink less type shit. Yeah. Didn't work. You're just kidding yourself. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, it... It, um... I feel everybody's... It's gonna, it's gonna go through it. But, yeah. And it is true, though. Like, like if you, it's when you really want to, yeah. man. Cause oh, I, yeah. There's been plenty of times where I tried and, um, and it's just like, I'm not getting ahead of myself. It is like, you always gotta, you gotta have that like healthy fear of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it, it could just take you again. And, um, so something it's like, like remembering of the, the force of gravity. Yes. Like it's, it's, I can fall. Yeah, yeah. It's, this, a, it's a real, uh, it's a real, real force. This is real. Gravity, you could sock the ground and it's going to f- crush your hand. You know yes, I mean? like yes, it, that's it, a good it, way of putting it. it. It's a fucking, so you got to, you, sh- you got to be weary of it. And um, me thinking about it, it, it puts me in check. Just like, oh shit. Like, you know, for when, sure. When I get my moments of like, where I think about drinking and stuff like that. But I, um, now I'm facing, I had a relapse dream recently. I haven't had one in a long time. Yeah. I've uh, had those too. <laughs> oh, oh, bro, those are they fucking. They fuck. fucking suck. They yeah. fuck with you. Yeah. They fuck with you. You wake up feeling like shit. Um, <laughs> Scared, and I, like damn. Yeah, and then even man. in the dream, I'm like, oh you, man. You go through it. Yeah. You know. It's like that shit. Like, oh, I'm gonna keep this secret. And yeah. Like, oh. I um, I it was one of uh, in this situation. I was uh, it, I was being social, and I accidentally swig swig a drink. Oh, oh shit! What the fuck? <laughs> what the f- <laughs> fuck? Oh, oh, I gotta tell my wife. Oh god! Oh, I'm so stupid. Three years, you know, just all that self abuse, that yeah. self, that that negative talk, and um, yeah, that was it. Until like I remembered later on the next day, out of nowhere, I was like, oh, huh. oh yeah, that <laughs> was in the dream. That was um, that was interesting, and uh, kind of. It, re- it kind of brought it up like hey yeah yeah you know that didn't go anywhere it, it, it reminded it reminded me it kind of humbled me out a bit like whoa yeah oh shit and i haven't been feeling well i haven't been feeling well at all and so like i'm saying like i uh facing these these challenges and and um this particular set of challenges for me i can see how i drifted so far into my drink and my using i i'm I haven't been in these in this set of challenges. I feel like this is a similar cycle of that time because I was trying to redefine myself, failed, uh, read, you know, try to come out of that and w- and I would fall further because I was drinking and using. So now doing the sim- similar types of things, but not drinking and using, it's fucking hard, you know, and I can really get a look at myself then. Yeah. 
and how how tough it was you know and i'm like bro you poor bastard at the same time it's like something about that is kind of fun though right yeah like for damn sure like the what i mean by that is like you know because it's it's new yeah like it's new for me since like 19 almost like around 1920 when i started like drinking and all that kind of stuff i hadn't uh faced issues and challenges without running to some sort of escapism yeah you know? and and uh now it's that's all new to me like okay i gotta deal with this i i gotta figure out how to like what's going on and yeah. okay th- this is coming from this place in my what i've uh compartmentalized over here yeah and now it's like okay i don't really have anything to run to so i gotta figure it out and then it's the the fun part about it is like the challenge and being strong about it it's like another it's another muscle and the more you use it the more like you get better at like uh decoding these things about yourself oh for sure then you become a stronger pillar and a person that other people can rely on you know what I no mean? i agree i completely agree with everything that you said so, so I, I i do enjoy those kind of those kind of challenges it is fun yeah, it, yeah um i and then i think when it's when you're in the thick of it and you're um <laughs> really feeling it like it's, it's coming over you and you overcome you overcome it, it's like yeah all right i'm on I'm getting closer. Yeah. You know, uh, I feel whenever your face, when life throws some real serious shit at you, you're getting close to something good. You know, mm-hmm. that's a that's a good rem- indicator. Like, oh, hey, bro, you're getting close. You know what I'm saying? That more that's like that they try to tell you to stop, you know, sit down. Yeah. And it's like, no. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Good. I know where I'm at. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. And, uh. Yeah, man, it's been... Um, and we've been prepared for that kind of yeah, thing, dude. for sure, you know? for sure. Because, I mean, a lot of people uh, throw in the tell half the time, you know? Like, I I've, I've grew up with plenty of other artists and musicians who a lot of times were in uh, competition with me or hated and stuff, and, and I don't really see them doing anything anymore with oh, that. Oh, bro, you know? and oh, it's like, that's sad, too. When you see it, the artists kind of just... But it's like maybe those people just never really had it in them kind of thing in reality and they're it was like they're doing it to like compete instead when it's like i was like not trying to do that to compete with you i was just that's what i do like, i, I feel like enjoy doing that shit well work it's it's you it's it's, yeah. it's who you are right i feel it's also if you don't use it you're gonna lose it yeah so for sure. like say if we're uh possessed by by that energy and if that energy is not getting fed, it's going to go away. Yeah. Why would it want to stay in a host? You know? Mm. I, I don't know. I'm, that's how I see it. Like, I, when I see all the, the, the once, the people that once were, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, I just see a, a empty shell once was. And so, like, I don't see Whoa. the energy anymore. Yeah. I really it's don't. Like, it's like a ghost. Yes. Like, a, a trapped yes. in purgatory yes. that you see right there. Yes. And, like, we okay yeah you want to go down that road and talk about it scares me it's a little scary that's kind of scary too you know i um originally when i got sober i was afraid i was going to lose lose that That if i get soup if i get if i if i stop drinking like who am i yeah you know like how am i gonna tap into that like that source the, the, the yeah. demons and yeah. all that kind of everything stuff. everything because that that source of energy is everything but it, it becomes better yeah it's so much <laughs> you pure. become more you become more uh like uh tight with your with your with your craft and all that you for know? sure and then that thing that they they talk about the blessings of sobriety i'd always hear about it and i'd i thought it was like some sort of like pyramid scheme like you know and i'd go to the meetings and all that and i was like i didn't believe it and I'd always hear about it, and then it's just a thing that just naturally happens as you stay sober. It's just like, just these blessings. Become, you become a better person. For you know? sure. You know? you know what also they, they, they would say, especially the old timers? And I wouldn't, it didn't really, I was like, huh, not me, that 
the immediately you're given everything immediately but then you're gonna get uh the face with the challenges to really test your sobriety oh yeah, yeah. and some of the so i remember some stories specifically because it was like he had gotten he had went back home with his wife he had gotten his job back and all that and then i went away Boom. and when that happened to me not well i, I was still um my, we were separated so i was sober separated from home and i i know i had lost my job and i was like where are those blessings <laughs> you know what i'm saying and so I, I um i i really had to really had to go through it to find that it was there and it will always be there yeah you know that abundant living that, wizard of oz dude yeah bro big time like you had it the whole time <sighs> and then when i went i think uh so in that time, I was doing a lot of lifting and like driving people and telling people my story. They're just like, dude, oh my god, you know. I'm very fortunate for that time. Met some really cool people. Um, homies, a song, a song, a songwriter for Lizzo wrote that um, that poppin' ass song. Which one? That big ass that uh, Truth Hurts by Lizzo. Um, a big girl. Not sure. Oh, okay. That truth yeah. hurts. That that some she brings out the flute. Anyways, homie <laughs> popping, popping wrote for Britney, Christina, whole thing. I think uh, you told me. That. Yeah, it was, just, it was like a really cool conversation, and just having just these interactions with people and sharing my story was, was validating, you know. Yeah. But yes, I uh, I really had to go through it to see the blessing, and then when you were given it again, oh my God, I got everything again home new job uh life is perfect right and 2020 happens yeah taking it all the way again and i'm just like whoa so bro i'm telling you i i'm very i'm 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 really understanding myself so much more with this time that i got to spend and especially in that dark time like now because i'm faced with the same challenges Sim well, similar, not the same, but similar challenges of like my identity and family, and just kind of finding that balance and everything. It, it's um uncomfortable as hell, but fucking a blessing. Yeah, <laughs> very Spir much a blessing spiritually for like, sure. Like I'm saying yeah, because you know things could be better always. Oh, material, material wise, for yeah, sure. You know, but as far as um, those blessings are very much there. Mm. Always, as soon as you put that bottle or whatever you're doing down, you're gonna live an abundant life. And like, when you accept it and truly realize it that it's there, oh, things change, bro. Because no matter what you're faced, you're like, ah, oh, shit. I'm yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm solid. I'm alive. There's no going back. Yep. That's what I was thinking too. Even getting this tat uh, tattoo the other day, like redoing it. Like, when I went in the first time uh, in 2016. It does I, pop. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It was like that I was going through a lot in that 2016 year. Not really bad. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I was fucking drunk when I got it that first time. And then the guy's like, hey, come back the next day. So, dude. I, we can hit it. And then we did. And I'm like, I can't believe I did that. But I was fucking drunk on whiskey the whole time. Did you bleed good? Dude. I know when you, it'll thin your blood, so when you're when you get yeah, poked, that's what I hear too. Uh. Yeah, um, but then this time I was like nervous, like fuck, dude, I'm gonna do this. And then I, I, I was just wondering, like, how the fuck did I come back the next day that other time? But uh, obviously, because I was like really drunk. And then this time I was just like I was able to take it without the without um, any substance to help ease that pain, and it was like. When I was getting it, I was like, I try not to think of the word sear or flesh. <laughs> Fight Club, man. And, uh, <clears throat> but I was, I was, I was getting, it, I was just thinking like, I'm alive right now. You yeah. know what I mean? And then it was like, fuck, I want to tap out. But then I was like, no, nah, man. It was like, like jujitsu, like just go a little bit more, man. And then, you know, then every time it was like, I wanted to again, no, just a little bit more. And then it was like, all right, we're, we're done. How long was it sitting? Uh, for this, it was four hours. The uh, recently, yeah. What for the neck? That shit's brutal. <laughs> no, yeah, dog. Come on, that's 
That's uh, some G shit, dog. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, damn, bro. You, you are hardcore. I love it. I, I want to get some work, too. I, I, I've been fiending for it. I just yeah. don't have... I'm not liquid enough. I'm not liquid. <laughs> nah, no, well, no, okay, you know no, what? I remember on uh, uh, Stealing Harvard, Tom Green, he's like, I know I wear these nice clothes because of my van, but I'm not liquid. <laughs> I, I don't remember, but I love that flick, and I, I, I got to go back and watch that. I yeah, haven't watched dude, Tom Green's funny. I love shit. Tom Green's. He, I think he's a big, you know, big winner. I think he was like a little bit ahead of. A hundred percent. Like, still got paid. No, no, yeah, he was like, he was revolutionary at that time, ninety eight, ninety nine. But he came out like right before he should have, in the sense. But there's always like it's always like the first one that does it. They're always like the best one. Then right after Jackass came out and did some of the same skits he was doing, and then they took like all the credit kind of thing. I think, and then 90, oh, oh bro. but Tom Green was the one that did that first. Oh, for sure. You know and then mean? now you look at, I think if you had no Tom Green, you wouldn't have Adult Swim. You wouldn't have Eric Andre. And all those you wouldn't prank, have prank all those videos prank, and shit. You, you wouldn't know, have like a your YouTube. prank culture of YouTube exactly. Like Tom Green, you know, he 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 knew what it was all a boot. <laughs> Bless up Canada, <laughs> um, bro. Yes, I uh, good time. Freddie got fingered. Oh yeah. Yeah, like that. that was I'm the backwards man. The backwards man. What else do I say in my head a lot? Um, He's like, "You mean so I shouldn't blow my brains out with this gun?" Because <laughs> he didn't get it accepted. Yeah, that movie's kind of like our story too. He's like he, in a sense, like he didn't. Uh, no one believed in his dream and uh, being a cartoonist, and and no one was like helping him get there. But. Uh, he did it anyways. Like, yep. you know, he quit his job at the cheese factory. Yep. <laughs> took the little baron. <laughs> yeah, took the little baron. Uh, and he went out to Hollywood or whatever to make his, his dream of being a cartoonist happen and uh, all kinds of crazy shit happened. Yeah. But then he did. That you adventure. Know? That's that um, adventure. The hero's place. journey. Yeah. <laughs> and that's In where it's at. In an absurd at. way, yeah. Yeah. And that's where it's at. You know, it's, it, it's, it, it really is the journey. Especially what, what was that's he surrounded what makes, by? Yeah, that's what makes Good it people, interesting. His, his boys, his um, his divine feminine, it's all there. Yep. You know, I love it. And what even you, even thinking? even the the haters, like his dad was a hater, right? Yep. But he channeled the that ener- he channeled that energy, and he he finally made it as the cartoonist by putting his dad into the cartoon. Oh man, I would love my dad as a cartoon. <laughs> but yes, you're right. Like it's that um that's that driving force. That's an yeah. alchemy right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, bro. I think I think about uh, our last talks of mental alchemy uh, recently because, like, you can feel your body changing when you're going through an emotion. Because I'm really trying to identify each emotion as they come through. And I probably look freaking pretty crazy when I'm going through it and having to fit. And you're just feeling your body tense up and just... And when you start to breathe and control it, change it mm-hmm. and utilize it let me, let me just you know hold it there <laughs> do you want to say something I, I, I think about I think about uh, one of our last discussions like recently I'm just like damn man oh, yeah I remember that power yeah what you were saying like you want to get to the point of uh, when you get those emotions like and then you Instantly. are able to channel it and then come out of it yeah you want to get it to where it's quick yep. but we need to fill that though too. Oh yeah, right? bro. And that, that those are for the masters. You know, we're still pretty young in our new life, so it's like uh, I have to remind myself all these, all these things will come in time. And like, of course, as an older man, you're not gonna be all hot headed. Like I'm still pretty hot headed, and um, every time I get I break my cool, I'm kind of down on myself. I'm just like, damn, oh shit. You know, and that's why I get that. I should, I know so much now, I should be better than that. But then you have to remind yourself, hey, you know, you're still on that road. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm getting better. And we're, yeah, we're, we're still, uh, we're still human and like, we gotta be able to fill these things too. You know, like, um, I would love to not feel certain things. Right. But, I guess we have to, man. You know what I mean? Like, there's no realistic. I think probably as an adult, like, 
more, you know, like we're not adults, but like, you know what I mean? We're like such kids at heart still. Yeah. But no, but, uh, that yeah, we can't lose that either. Yeah. You can't lose that, but you got to accept the responsibility and, and all these things that come with, uh, you know, adultism and all that. But, uh, as you get like older and more mature, either they are able to just control those things quit uh more or they know how to hide it more yeah i i i, I don't know <laughs> i was told that too it was like you need to learn how to hide it or do something because society kind of take it. society's not gonna allow people to just fly off the handle yeah and that's Which is my, true, man. Yeah. yeah, and I completely understand that. And There's I, a place for those people, I guess, and that's prison and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, if you can't control certain things, like, society will control you. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm, um, I'm, taking, I'm taking that seriously, especially with the people that I love. They don't deserve that. They don't deserve that at all. And um, especially, the, you know, the world, <laughs> you know, like... Nobody wants nobody wants a, a a crazy Buddha, you know. That, that's that. That looks weird, anyways. I, I make ugly faces. My vein gets all, I get veiny. <laughs> you know. Now that I'm bald too, it just doesn't look good. You know. And I'm I'm um I'm aware of that now. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying to change that. And that's what the drinking would bring out too in me was that. I was a sweetheart like, and a sad drunk. But go ahead. Yeah. I I wish I was like that. <laughs> You know, not yeah. All, yeah, you know, not all the time. I, I did turn into a piece of shit for sure. Yeah. Crazy piece of shit. <laughs> you know, that full blown shadow king. Like, oh, well. Yeah. See, we were like, we we're trying to kill the. The. Um, the healthy ego. We we're trying to kill that. And that shadow was trying to take over that okay. Tyler Durden. That's for sure. But an important thing I've been kind of realizing lately and um, kind of looking into was like Jung and, and uh, Jordan Peterson talk about too is I brought that I brought something for you. is um, the integration of the shadow. So they they're not they don't think it's a good thing to get rid of the shadow. No, it's about learning to Integrate, integrate. integrating yeah. it exactly. Yeah, I was gonna bring you the uh, the warrior magician. Or the King Warrior Magician Lover. Archetypal book. Mm-hmm. That's know. cool. That would have been a perfect time. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, uh, I love it. I love it, and that's it's it's true. I um and you, I think we're fortunate enough to kind of we got we got faced with our darkest selves, you know, and and once <laughs> once we uh, kind of came through that battle. You, we were we were left to walk with our shadow, you know. There was no complete uh, separation from the two. Yeah, no. You know, uh, uh, you know, right? I don't want to speak for you, but no, yeah. I, I mean, don't see you completely, you know. Fuck, you know. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend either. Yeah, you know? yeah, like no. It's, it's it's there, but it's um, and you know what? It's like it's like I used to when I was trying to figure these things out. Um, when I'd be in those classes, those therapy classes, and all that, like. I was like, it was very sexy and alluring, the that that darkness and and uh, like it's still there. Oh, and, word. And, but it's That's like that, I temptation. And it's that line, you know, that that you walk. But I went like fucking on the edge of that cliff, and I was staring at the abyss, and it was staring back at me. You know what I mean? So it was when I was there that I just it was like, I guess the. Um, that's kind of like the the fool archetype, you know. The fool is like on the edge of the cliff, about to walk off with his dog, but he has the faith. That's where the fool aspect comes in. He has the faith that he's going to be caught, or that there's uh, another ledge at the end of that cliff. And I guess spiritually, I had that faith too, even though it got real fucking scary at times. But I think as an artist, sometimes you need to get close to that edge because there's also sounds and different things you can see right there. And if you are a warrior, spiritual warrior, you could bring those those sounds out and release some of those lost souls. You For know sure. I, mean? I agree. 
and and you can make music out of it that's where the alchemy comes back out you know and occasionally you need to peer back off but I, I don't need to get lost in it either. And that's I mean? the and that's the, the, the flip side of that. The the getting trapped. Yeah. You start to want. Yeah. And that's so when you want room. and need that, you're 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 pretty much that self fulfilling prophecy like I need to get hurt. I, I need to life I need life to be then it's shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's the um, uh, like glutton for punishment, yeah. like self sabotaging yeah. and all that. Yeah. So that's why I've been uh, artistic. So yeah, luckily, like that's where the blessing comes in. Is like, thank you for helping me like yeah. out of that kind yeah. of thing, you know. So, so now you could like, uh, you know what's there. You don't, you don't need to like. No need to go back. Yeah, that's that edge. You mm-hmm. know, you like you. It's you. You you dance, bro. You dance in the that dark. Energy is just. Yeah. And it's like, the, almost at that vertical horizon, that point of no return. Yeah. You're able to, you know what I mean. But that's a dangerous thing, for sure. And not many, not many can come back. No. Uh, what did I hear? I heard Steve-O talking about his, some of his trips. I've heard, uh, seen that show. It's called like uh, Roads from the Trip or Tales from the Trip. Mm. It was a really good, and you know, that's how it happens. You know, <laughs> you want to you want to talk about it, but he mentioned about how. Not too many people can come back from that, and yeah. they don't. You see them stuck in the in the street, fucking gone, gone, you or know, you die, or, de- or, or dead, or game jail. over because you fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And so it's a, it's a, it's a. So we're we are blessed. Big yeah. blessing to yeah. say, hey man, fucking made it, brother. Woo! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> got a little Close scary. Call right there. Got a little scary for a minute, and um, it's a trip because if you listen to any like self help. Uh, uh, speakers or the literature like it is an awakening like I remember my first sober or no not not the first sober day but the first day I knew I was gonna stop drinking that I felt like my spirit was done like my, I had um like, like the, yeah. the energy it got what it wanted oh. you know like everything that had to happen happened there was no need to continue it was like okay done here the spirits of death yeah, bro, and we're, it, we're gone or fleeing or scared. Yeah, you know? it, 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 uh, it, the wicked flee when no man pursue it, and the righteous stand as bold as lions. Oh, bro, a hundred percent. And so, I remember feeling. Looking back at it now, I remember feeling light. If that makes sense, light, light, like lighter. There was oh. no heavy. Oh, okay. There was no heaviness to that day, and um. Now looking back at it, I remember that thirst, that unquenchable, that unquenchable thirst. And now I drink coffee and water to to appease it. But now I'm pick your battles, like you yeah, said. bro, pick your battle. <laughs> but um, I remember specifically though that drunken thirst to I'll never stop if I had a, the money or the volume of alcohol, just keep it coming. Yeah. And for some, it will never stop. You know, and I'm, uh, I'm very grateful. Yeah, to same, make it out, dude. brother. I, I didn't think I would, honestly, man. I, I mean, and it's like I'm I so said, proud of you and your choices, bro. Mm. Thank you, bro. But it's just like try to be humble about it, like every day, like you know, just and grateful. We and have stuff. to, we have to, we have to, and that's that. Like you said earlier, it's that. That's what kind of keeps us in check. You know. Yeah, and it's a like. There's more to lose, and it's just oh, like bro. it's not even like just for some fucking bullshit. You for know sure, I mean? it's like okay. So a scenario, say world ending, nothing to live for now. Hey, you have like, would you, would you, would you crack open a bottle if you're the last person on on Earth? <laughs> Fuck, I I don't know, man. You know, like. Uh, I think I, I often think about I put myself there as like, what if I was put in that position mentally? How, how would I know it would be the last day? Uh, like nuclear war fallout, like legit Maybe, end of times. Shit, that's like that's a matter of integrity at that point. Yeah, and so like, know, like knowing yourself, like true to yourself, you'd be true to your word no matter like what. Every, you lost everybody. And yeah, stuff. everybody's wow. fucking See, that, gone. That's hard. I I wouldn't know if I would. 
like give up at that point. I love the honesty. Or if I would have hope, like I many times I have had hope. That's the, like the one thing that fucking I always held on to is like hope for something better, and that's maybe, faith. Yeah, the faith. So maybe I, w- in that sense, maybe I wouldn't, in search of another person, that maybe survived also. Something, something, uh, will click in. I like that. I um like the Twilight Zone. Yeah. There was good. There was time. <laughs> there was good. I think I remember that one with the glasses. Uh. Every, he's the last person on earth yeah I don't remember the details but I do remember sets that up one, his yeah. books he has all the his favorite books he wants to read and oh yeah breaks wasn't his that a, a Rocky's coach yep. yeah yeah I see that one what's his name uh, 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 Ver- Be- Meredith Burgess Meredith or mm. something like that mm. <laughs> hell yeah <dude. laughs> uh, have you ever seen with uh, Anthony Hopkins with uh, the puppet yeah magic yes yeah, that's a great movie. He played his uh, uh, his manager. Oh, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, fucking. I was watching too. that like a few months back. Oh, it gave me chills. Just thinking about it, I'm just like, I never want to lose it. You know, like I don't. Yeah, I don't. And the um, I may not have like we may I get may get old and lose it. You know, I I know I have a say in it, but when it comes to neurologically. Sometimes you don't have a say in it. Like, if that's what's going to happen, it's going to happen. Talking about uh, Alzheimer's and other degenerative conditions. Yeah. You yeah. know, and take there's it, always like an X factor yes. to things. So. And so, taking account of all the concussions that I've had in my life, that comes, that's one of my big fears is losing the biggest blessing and gift I was given, you know, the control of my mind. And, uh, those types of uh, uh, scary movies scare the crap out of me. So magic, uh, those yeah, for me those, too. Those like, psychological uh, thrillers. Like, I know that. Shutter Island was a bit predictable. That's what I was gonna say next. Yeah, it was like a like a little bit predictable because uh, a lot of movies did that after Fight Club kind of thing. Okay, that's true. But I still thought it was a great movie, and, and, it, and it still scared me for Fuck that reason. Up, man. Like, those kind of movies, like Fuck they do get up. me. That was always, like, the thing that scared me the most, like, when I would be tripping was, like, damn, we'll, like, get out of this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that right. one time, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. We, me and Buddha Man played a gig. He's like, oh my God. and I had, I had acid. Go ahead, tell it. Tell the story. I had, I had a video I, of it somewhere. I had a vial of acid. I met these guys in South Central off of Western in, like, 40-something. And uh, for whatever reason, they, yeah, they gave me a, a, a thing of acid. It was a vial. And then um, me and Buddha Man had a gig in uh, Pomona at Characters. And he's like... You were driving. And I think... the, I think, to be honest, I, I didn't want to drive. And that's why I was telling you not to take the acid. Oh. I don't know why I was so... Don't take the acid, Rabs, please. <laughs> don't do the acid raps. <laughs> to be honest, I think the only my only reasoning for that is because I didn't want to freaking drive. Because I wanted to get drunk, probably. Oh. <laughs> Most likely, I want to say that. Uh, but I think we stopped at a liquor store, and I came back, and you're just you're sitting there like this. And I'm like, you took the acid, huh, raps? You're like, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that show was crazy too. Oh I, my god! I did a, I did a flow with Buddha Man. Oh and dude! Did, and I was hearing like, like, the performers before saying like they were rapping, and I was hearing them say like Satan six 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 Satan six things like that. But that was probably like spiritually who they were. You know what I mean? Like they probably weren't saying that, bro. And uh, I was yeah. Was- I was just, it was more, it was like that trip was more auditory for me. Okay. I was hearing a That's lot heavy. of different things. Yeah. That was heavy. I yeah. remember you you look pretty catatonic for like the most of it. Oh. <laughs> and then when it was your time to play, you were just like boo 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 boo. Boom. I think you did Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. Or or it was we Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. Or some I, yeah whatever. You fucking killed it. And then that was it. And then when we went off stage, I think you were peaking because you kind of just went, oof. Yeah. And uh, I think the homie. Uh, uh, it was uh, crazy because I, I was about to pass out. Yeah. 
I was feeling it like it, it just got overwhelming like the sensory overload yeah and, and it was um uh, Artie Swells yeah he was shot right, Artie <laughs> he was right there and then the other uh, the other hip hop artist uh, Elohim yes. which was that, that's what was trippy like I, I grabbed him I was like hey man I'm sorry is it cool if I just put my hand right yeah. here dude? and he was like cool with it and and then uh, they were just kind of looking at me but they were like cool and they, yeah. they were kind of like they're good me. people a cool crew yeah I bumped into him a couple times out in Ontario that's with dope recently uh, but yeah that was I did the same to my mom we went to go watch Slayer this was like right before I went to rehab this fucking big Viking white dude with a beard and long hair came up to me he's <laughs> all fucking Thor. big and shit he's like you want some mushrooms <laughs> and I was like sure and he fucking he puts a bunch in my hand and shit and then oh, in front of my mom and like her cousins and uh, and they're like my mom's like don't do them and then they turn around fucking <laughs> and she's like you did them and I was like sorry <laughs> same shit dude fucking that was a, that was a crazy ex- I went to like rehab like a week later or something that, like that that's and, good well so the medicine uh, hey it showed you where to go <laughs> when it comes to mushrooms and other things of that nature they were given to us to be used properly i think by ancestors There's, that's, that's yeah. why they're there on the earth i never i never really partied with them it that kind of sounds like i partied with them that's a party that's like whoa yeah but it was always kind of like i always kind of looked at it as like a, a, a way to um connect yeah connect and like understand some deeper shit about myself you know what i mean well, good well that's what i i just based on uh what was it it's a vice show homies um so-and-so's He's a doctor and goes through just about every psychedelic. Breaks down the science, breaks down the culture and where it comes down. Extremely fascinating show. But on my, you know, on my, in my digging, you, you've come to find out, like, okay, there's plant medicine. And that medicine in that culture was intended for a, a purpose. Just like with most things, we abuse the shit out of things yeah. that were given to us for a certain intention. And I think those are those situations to where you take a handful of mushrooms and when you really shouldn't, like, like that's not what it was intended for. But again, you were shown and given what you were supposed to. Yeah. Because the spirit was like, all right, motherfucker, you're here. Let me take you down this road. Whatever you saw on that trip, whatever. Mm. I'm, I'm just saying, speaking from my belief. That's kind of the way I viewed it. That's what I was yeah. like. All right, this is, I, I have to take this right now kind of thing. I was stupid. But <laughs> then it was like... I was like at watching Slayer, like the music was all badass oh, Primus bro. and Ministry and all that Fuck. shit. But once Slayer was playing, I was like, oh, "Shit, I'm in hell." Like, <laughs> oh my god! I was like, dude, yeah. but, but I accepted it. I was yeah. like, "I'm in hell." Here I am. Like I was like I was like cool with like okay, my life is hell. But then you know, <laughs> after I went to rehab, I was like, uh, I I um, the day I felt for like forgiven in a sense though it's like it may be arrogant to think that but i'm like i was i was struggling with this guy in in, um, in rehab he was like he was talented he was like charismatic and uh you know he's good looking whatever and i was like he reminded me of myself in a sense yeah and i could not fucking stand this guy <laughs> And it was just like, like I didn't like him probably because it was like the way I am. Okay. You? And I'm not saying I'm fucking all these things or whatever, but no, something I, about like you know, something about him. If, Anyways, if you believe in the the collective, you know, where you're gonna see yourself in every every everything that you face with. Yeah, and the thing is like, when once I was in there starting to get sober, things that would take me like a year months to like realize i was like realizing them like quick like i realized right away i'm like this guy i that he reminds me of me i don't fucking like him and i and i was trying to control that and i just couldn't so i was like talking to the counselor and then he i and i would tell him a bunch of shit and yeah. i would break things down together you know 
like he probably spent more time with me because I was like really trying to figure shit out. Oh, for sure. And then I'm like, what do I do about this you guy? You want help. You yeah. want to be helped. Well, that's... He, trying to figure out, okay, in this situation, I'd probably drink and be confrontational or something, you know, but I'm not. And then it, he's like, well, pray for him to get what he wants. And I was like, damn. Well, what if, like, he wants, he probably wants, like, to be successful and, like, I don't know, be an artist. And I'm like, fuck, I had to pray for that for this guy? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. He's like, because, I mean, he might, he'll probably end up fucking it up anyways. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, so I prayed for him to get what he wants. And then I, I had, there was a yoga class that I'd go to and not many people would go. Not many guys. There'd be girls, but I, I went because I was like, I wanted to get close I'll go to, to yoga with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I, was, I really enjoyed the yoga, the, the spiritual aspect and we'd meditate and everything and That's get cool. into like an altered state. Uh, just natural and and then it was like in Fight Club he infiltrated my fucking piece there and I was like oh, dude. And I you're Marla like, Singer yeah <laughs> and I and I had already known uh, talked to him about that but now he's coming here and I was it just could not help but to fucking fill this for this guy and then we were all at they, they were like what do you guys want and they asked us like uh, so we're all I was like what do you want Ruben and I was like I want to be able to like deal with uh jealousy and uh resentment and stuff like that and and uh it's okay so I, and then it goes around it, the guy's like uh, you know i have a, a daughter that because we're all addicts in there you know he's like i have a daughter that i want to see eventually and that's what i'm like really hoping for so i remember it, while we were in there meditating like and i was pray, i was like praying hard dude and meditating hard and i was like I prayed for him to be able to see his daughter. And um, I remember at that moment, I like got chills and I started to see colors and stuff like that. And I got chills because at that moment, I felt by me praying for him and being able to forgive him for like the way I was feeling, I felt God forgave me at that moment. And then... I felt, for once, I felt forgiven, you know? Nice. That's and powerful. It was, dude. And then I had him in class, like, a, I don't know, a few days later. And we would always, like, say little things back and forth to each other in class. And then I brought it up, and I explained that to him. And I was like, dude, um, you know, I, I had all these, like, feelings about you and all this. But um, I just wanted to say that that I I was because uh, he brought up before that this is like a little bit after maybe a couple weeks he was saying that he got to see his daughter okay uh, they I guess they visited him in there or something like that and, up. and I was like hey dude you know I'm really happy that you were able to see your daughter I know you've been wanting that and praying for that and I was like and I just want to let you know that I prayed for you for that and um you know, we, you and me have bumped heads, and but, like, on a side note, that's really cool. Happy for you, dude. And then after that, he, like, um, he probably had those same feelings that I had for him as, like, he had them for me, yeah. too. You know what I Disarmed mean? Disarmed him a bit? Uh, uh, yeah, afterwards, we never bumped heads again. We were that's just cool. And uh, I, like, all that shit went away. Yeah. I didn't feel anything afterwards, you know what I mean? I, I love it. I love it. I love it. It was like, so it was a big lesson for me, and I wasn't able to run away because I was in there, and I yeah. wasn't able to go to anything. I had to no confront escape. this. So it's like, you really learn tools of how to deal with things and emotions and feelings and stuff like that, heavy ones, you know, yeah. with other people that have these mental issues and yes, stuff like that. So, I agree. So yeah, it was just a powerful experience that like I don't think I'll ever forget, and and that's why like I'm so grateful I have those those tools to be able to deal with other things that may not be so heavy, and if some heavy shit comes, hopefully I'll, I'll be a little prepared, you know. I, I I'm here to to uh, li as a living testimony to that that you will be prepared for that. That's all, like bro, I'm standing proof to that. My uh my wife even asked me, she's like, you know, like. After all this, like, you know, I've kind of 
kind of worried about you. And I'm just like, bro, nothing's ever going to send me back. I'm okay. And it's like, you know, that uh, authenticity in that, like, knowing that's true, psh, bro, it's a good feeling. Oh, yeah. I know you, I know you feel it, too. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, man. So, I wanted to uh, get to some more of the Buddha origins. So, I know one big aspect about you, besides your artistry and uh, music and and photography and you know film and all that you started in uh you started you you made a splash brutally boom with some with what you know you came in with some fucking force to psh, through your backyard wrestling and, yes. and uh like your yeah it's like underground wrestling and that's um, true underground <laughs> uh, yeah and I know like I did that like mildly with some friends just for like fun but you you guys took it like pretty serious that was a thing in the in the late 90s early 2000s yeah. like yeah it, yeah you so, were you know look at uh, how Cactus Jack you know Mick Foley yeah, started like yeah that's had, how that you was, guys did it uh, Edge and uh, you guys weren't fucking around you guys were like leave every time bloody and yeah. fucking broken bones oh bro we, 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 we didn't we didn't play. Yeah. That was uh, a special time. So, so uh, you know, I, because, you know, I know about it, and I always hear, like, your stories, but how did that start? And how, oh, how did you guys get into that? And and then, like, what was your gimmick? And, and Okay. Uh, like, if you had any feuds or anything. Oh, like bro. That. I got, I, okay. Well, the the promotion was called Insane Wrestling League. And I'm glad you're, yeah, I'm glad we're talking, we're having this conversation, because I've been on my on my my partners they're my good friends and my good good brothers they're ass one specific mr victor luna i've been trying to get a hold of him and mind you i understand i lost a lot of his money and he and he eh, i wouldn't want to return my phone calls anyway so <laughs> i'm trying to get the content there's t- about 20 years of content bro and oh, I, damn. I want to make a film yeah that's you know cool. like a legit film about this story and I did a lot of writing and like trying to to do it, and it just kind of it's kinda like I'm telling the story of um, like has-beens or never was's and it, there's really no that's story. It, that's always interesting too, man. Yeah, for sure. Or even give him one last wrestle, like put up the ring yeah. and do one match. But now I feel I'm going to go in a different uh, a different path with the story. But it's still I want to tell our story with you know using this footage but also i can't just do that like there's still so much more to be done with that footage so i want to release it i want to other people want to put together compilations like there's so much that can be done with our legacy yeah so to long story short so uh, i don't go out in vain yeah yeah. right uh so we were called insane wrestling league and mind you they were um they were doing their thing before i even went in and got involved but I believe my I started wrestling 2001 or 2000, 2001. Yeah, I say 2001 because we went to um, Comic Con to go meet uh, Insane Clown Posse that year. Oh, I had my fucking long stupid fucking uh, spider tails. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, so that's how I, I I started. I remember I was still playing football at the time. My original gimmick was Hack Benjamin. Because I was juggle as fuck. Hack Benjamin was a character from Big Money Hustlers. So I wore a ski mask and an amazing Jekyll Brothers shirt. And that survived maybe two matches. I got demasked and I proclaimed myself as Billy Body Bags. And that was it, bro. Uh, my gimmick was me. After that, it was just really just me. You know, I think we tried to do something stupid. Oh, we were painted. We were called the Dark Carnival. I wasn't stupid. We were the Dark Carnival. Dark Carnival, you know, we were a faction. I had my homie DC, Wicked Clown. We had uh, the homie Bob, and you guys were like, like, um, like you said, a carnival but dark. So like yeah. NWO type of fucking bad guy. Exactly, bro. Yeah. We were we were the Juggalo NWO. Thank you for that reference. I'm sure everybody's like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was um, it. Was pretty much me rebelling against football. Uh, family life was shit. I remember I went to school in Hacienda Heights, 
at, and I'm from La Puente, so everybody else was pretty more well well off than I was financially, mm-hmm. from families wise. Um, I had, you know, I I made, I made my friends, but it was still, <laughs> bro. I wouldn't even have rides home. I had to take the bus. It was a real tough time for me, and so I found my my community with my juggle community, and I started wrestling. So, bro, uh, that was an escape, like that, um, and a release as well. All the violence, all that aggression, bro. <laughs> oh my god, because my I would. And it's like creativity too with yes. the characters. Oh, bro, it's so much. You're kind of like embodying uh, uh, an altar. Yeah, right there. You know? Yeah, for sure. And um, it was. For all of us, it was kind of ourselves, like what we want, how we want, how who we wanted to be, or whatever, you know. Like yeah. you said, you know, our altars. And so, uh, what was the third question? I, that was my origin, if you had my any, gimmick, like feuds, yes, because like, uh, that that always makes wrestling fun, like the, the stone, drama, Stone Cold with uh, Bret Hart at the yeah. beginning. That kind of like elevated him. And we had a DX a, with the heart, you know, all that shit. Well, we had a, a a rival a rival faction called Sangre. And that was those were the the faces, or you guys were. We were we pretty much but, we, we were we were kind of heelish, but we but were the that, faces. Yeah, because at that time, that's when like the bad guys were the the cool guys, yeah, you know, the, all, the antiheroes, right? And that's yeah. kind of what I was gonna say. We were like the antiheroes, and so, but we were terrible, bro. We would do run-ins all the time. <laughs> we were very stiff. We were shit, <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, but real. My my most memorable feud was with my homie Casey. We did uh two that was a singles feud. We did one two two matches. Uh, we were gonna do a third, but that ended up happening. But um, he was a champion, and so we wrestled in Pomona. Had this big amazing match. I did a uh I think I did a splash to the outside from the from the top rope. It was nuts, man. We ended up fighting at the end of the match into the uh, the back room. People thought we were really fighting. <laughs> They're like, bro, like, what happened? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. That's the best, it. dude. Did it. That, that kayfabe with yeah. you. Know, the... Oh, bro. And then going into the, the big match, it was a big ladder match in Anaheim. And so when we did that, that, that next match, nobody knew who was going to win. It was... Me versus Casey, you know, Billy Body Bag versus Archangel, championship title match, ladders, oh, you know? Yeah. The hype was real. And um, I didn't even know who was going to win, to be honest. And I was like, man, look, Kay, put me over, and I'll put you over for part three, man, you know? And he's like, all right, that's cool. I'm like, all right, cool, I'm going to get the belt. And uh, I felt, I think, I think it was kind of felt, too, that they we wanted me to have the belt as well to kind of push our, cause we were popping bro. The dark carnival, like we were, we were, we were, we were doing it. It was fun. Anyways, the match was intense. Like one of my favorite matches ever. Uh, he's a high flyer. So lots of, lots of, you know, uh, uh, agility. We were going crazy. Moon salts off the ladder. Uh, good time, man. That, that was that was kind of your style too, because you you were yes. able to do like flips and yeah. shit like that. I um I trained lucha for a little bit. I, you know, I was just an entertainer. I would fly. I'd I'd, I'd wrestle because I had my 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 legit wrestling background. So like, you know, I tried to, you know, be a real wrestler, but at the same time, I wanted to be hardcore too and just do yeah. crazy shit. And so I tried to kind of blend that together. I couldn't really talk though, bro. I was never not a promo guy. Mm. My uh, DC would talk talk for me. Uh, any other time I was in the camera, I was just mad. <laughs> you know, Ugh. those are some of the best though. They're funny. Yeah, yeah. like if you look at <laughs> like my fucking old... uh, Psycho Sid or whatever, he's just oh yeah, yeah, like, gotta talk so high end. Yeah, that would be <laughs> high energy. Uh, not real. I, my charisma was just my presence. In my my ability, and so like I, I I would captivate crowds by I think my just my overall ability, not much my microphone skills. My cousin Manny, bro, that was a mic genius. Yeah. Yeah. That fool. He's always been like quick. Huh? Oh, very quick, and just just that character, and just how guys like and he'll just go. You know, like now, like that on your your Buddha man. The oh wrestle yeah, rap. The wrestle rap. Yeah, like he you didn't tell him what to say. No. He just fucking off the top. Just huh? go. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's just that's just who he is, and like some people got it like that, you know. He's definitely one of those guys. Um, 
yeah, looking back at it, that was like, man, I, I was one of my regrets that I never got really good at my my mic presence. And it's like, well, I ended up be, being a performer anyways, and still you like well, and use you use utilizing that mic that mic presence and that you know, but I would have it would have did a lot better if I practiced more uh, in the wrestling, and that would have had I think gave me more um, communication skills. Or that I didn't get to use back then. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But well, I think uh, you, you, you developed that. For, for sure. sure. Like, you have that now. Yeah. When you've performed and everything. Well, I appreciate that. I, I think life gave me different scenarios to do that, especially when we worked together. Yeah. That and definitely for sure. that a lot. Uh, but, yeah, looking back at it, like, I, I come on, man. I see it, uh, all the indie workers now, and I see their promos and shit. I'm like, ah, we'd be doing cooler shit. <laughs> Maybe not. Probably just as lame. But yeah, man, it was a really special time. Um, How did you transition from that to? Because uh, it was like right after that, you started doing camera, music, right? The camera, bro. The camera. The camera, there? because uh, hip hop was there forever. If you look at my eighth grade yearbook, you're gonna see. I want to be a famous rapper. When my wrestling team says they want to be pro wrestlers, <laughs> end up being both. And so. Even when I was younger, uh, fifth grade, fourth grade, talent shows, po- poetry competitions in them, whatever I was in it. That's uh, I believe they everybody said that you could tell I was gonna be a rapper because uh, in my first poetry recital in third grade, I held the microphone like this. <laughs> uh, my cousin, you know, my cousin Ray Reedy, eighties rapper, like those uh, original. You know that cut from the original source. Yeah. That's all. I, that's what I saw. So I saw MC from from its raw form. I was hooked. I, it never left me. And so, definitely, you know, I, I, it was there. You know, it was always there. And when I got hurt, I was helping the promotion by doing video coverage. I'd have people come film promos. I did some pretty cool promos. Mm. And that was that video production bug. Yeah. So I, I love editing. I always loved editing. Loved photography. And went into videography and was like, all right, cool. And in that time, when I was hurt. I was hurting. So a that's lot of, when you got hurt from the... Yeah. That's yeah. when I... You I, should probably mention that. Part. Okay. So after after wrestling, well, during wrestling, my end of wrestling that's, was... That's how it... Yeah. That was the nexus to yes. the transition. Right? I fell... And was hurt. Um, so, yeah. Well, I, I jumped. We jumped off a 20-foot cage, and I broke my back. Did you finish the match? The match was f- was called. They didn't finish the match. No? Oh, damn. It was a bummer. So, you were like Bob Backlund, and you, like, didn't lose. Were you champion right there? <laughs> no, it was a faction. It was a it was a, it was a big match. Oh. Uh, there was no need for it, that move. That was... We just wanted to steal the show. Yeah. But he uh, busted his leg in two places, uh, had a small fracture, you know, on my L7 lumbar. It was a bummer. Uh, life-changing, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of small. A little small <laughs> little detail little there. Detail. I, uh, so, you yes. Had to, you had to find the, um, like, the way to express. And, and for sure. Oh, ways. for sure, bro. I remember um, I hit the bottle real hard. I was on pills. And uh, just really down, bro. And I would freestyle a lot with my cousins. And it was like, all right. You know, and then I started writing. And when I started writing. When you put it down on paper. That's when, that's when things started changing. That's what I noticed. Some, like some people could be really gifted with the freestyle. But it doesn't become like tangible unless you really write it down. You know what I mean? Some magic spells, bro. Yeah, for and, sure. And so like I... Once I started writing and then reciting and then getting it, I was like, wow, you know, this feels good. There's that release. And also, I was still video uh, doing doing video work. And then at that time, I did a uh, – oh, my bad. You just turned off. Um, probably might have to take that. Um, it's okay. Not, not right now. You my bad. You were doing video work? Yeah, I was doing video work, and the – uh, the Living Legends. It was a hip hop hip hop group, you know, popping underground hip hop group. They had a, con- a contest, and it was uh, you submit your own music video to their to their track. I won. 
like I was one of the winners. Like they selected like so many, you know, uh, videos. But so the whole summer, you know, I, I shot and edited this music video yeah. and got it put on the official song. Got free concert tickets. Sick! I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah that. And so when I got to the show, it was when I saw the opening performers that I knew I was better than them. No. Uh, and I knew. Like you could be. A I can. Yeah. I was like, this is where I'm gonna be heading. You know, like, I knew it then. Like, I really wasn't taking things seriously, but I, I knew where I was heading then. And, um, saw the show. Fucking awesome show. Scarab shot me a, um, a, a, a skateboard deck. Sick. And, um, uh, I sold it at the end of the show for 50 bucks and bought an eighth. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so, uh, I had that, you know, my ego was infl- inflated because, like, oh, yeah, I got a, I, I, I got now this. you now you had uh uh what's it called like um what do they say like your portfolio was was starting it started right there and, and then it was um okay I'm gonna this is what I'm gonna do and then that's when I started doing my own shit getting I started working with my homie uh, and then started doing my own shit and was then that around we, that was around that time time when I met you and then it was um more then we started remember we started getting really into our 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 camera work yeah. And uh, around 2014. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And so like yeah. do doing um, you know doing all that. Doing different. Things. Really, really exposed me to like. What 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 was out there for us? You know, like I really love that camera work. But yeah, it was that initial uh, rush that pushed me to hey bro grab that mic really yeah. go for it, tell your story. Yeah. And uh, do you currently have? Uh, Anything you like, any new material? Or anything oh, bro, or, like that. That's, I think that uh, we'll probably have to say that for a whole nother fucking episode, but yeah, definitely. But I, yeah, I want you to yes, do your please. plug and stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll send, uh, put the link below. Uh, New Smoke TV on YouTube. Uh, that's right here. Right here. Bless. The gear. Um, bam. The cat is where it's at. The cat in the hat. Um, yeah, New Smoke TV, Instagram, Buddha Dad. Buddha Martinez on all platforms. I had to do the the, the name change. I remember that was yeah. that was big for me. Like that was when it really was like I'm a professional. I have a product. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not more so now than ever. Cause now I feel if, now even this past ten years of making music and doing stuff, it was like now I've never been more serious in my craft and my product. Yeah. Cause now that. Uh, we didn't have that problem back then so with search engine optimization. You know what I'm saying? So now, oh, yeah. when I cut the Buddha man and I and I made a big thing about it, I was like, Buddha man's dead. I'm gonna quit. I made this big drama on Facebook, then deleted my Facebook, and now everybody that wants to interact with me has to find me. And the only way they're gonna find me is through music. I was done. I was like, Ugh. Yeah. but when I made that jump. Buda Martinez was now it's the it's it's stupid searchable. If you Google Buddha man or try to search Buddha man, you're gonna get like so many different uh, search pop ups. Buddha Martinez, there's only one. That's good. I didn't think of, I didn't think I didn't have any that didn't. This is the area that this is the age that we live in now the the digital era and how we can utilize our tools to the to the best of our capabilities yeah. but definitely uh that was huge for me and it kind of all right go get it but new smoke the new smoke is a collective you know you you rock with the tribe new smoke is just the straight cat that, diy though. yeah man that straight cat that you go feed it's like there's that cat man that cat will find you. When that cat finds you, you're blessed. And that's how I feel. That's what we bring to the world. The, you know, you're going to see that cat. You're going to know, you know, everything's okay. And, like, uh, that really gave me a place to to build my, my music and my legacy now. Because now it's not so much just a, a Buddha thing. It's what's up, what's under the New Smoke brand. So there's Shortstop. There's one, two. Oh, they got rap. They got a music. They got this. They got uh, poetry, more art, film. You know, I, I really want to give the photography, uh, yeah. All that stuff, yeah. I want to give that that umbrella to to our our content. And yeah. New Smoke was definitely the 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 way to go. 
That's cool. Yeah. Thank you for that. I I wouldn't even plug my shit. <laughs> I'm just nah, talking man, to you, you brother. Nah, like, I, I know that, man. You got it, though, bro. But, yeah. Uh, well, thank you for that. And and you just released a, a video also. Yes. Could that video, bro. Um, it w- was called Lost. Uh, please, if anybody wants to take a look at it, I, that's awesome. Uh, it was filmed and, and edited by Shortstop, my, you know, my, my partner in crime. Um, very tragic you know i wrote that song i think that's the only thing i ever written while on drugs Mm. you know like i i took i can take a lot from that time still can but that was the only like proof of pure pain and and just negativity that i was in is that song i was truly lost Mm. in that moment yeah and um when i originally made my visual I made it to, uh, uh, I did the, what's the movie called? Sunset Boulevard? Oh, yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time. It's a great movie, dude. Um, That's where you get the classic line, and I'm ready, ready for, for my close-up. Up. Yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah. But, hey, man, that's that's interesting. I didn't know that that's where you got that concept from. Not, not remember stops. I, not I, stop. That was mine. Yeah. Remember my, the, the pool? I made the yeah. one of me drowning yeah, in the pool? Yeah, okay. That's oh, where wow. that was coming and from. And that was like. Remember I told you, I was like, oh, dude, I like it, that film noir style. And so Stop makes a complete different video three years ago, mind you. It was lost. This mm-hmm. content was lost. That was when we first clicked up and decided to start New Smoke together. Oh, okay. And so, and this is a blessing, fucking gave me everything, like a good reminder and a good, like, hey, bro, look at what, you know, look what's here. But, yes. We both didn't communicate about the visuals or whatever. I'm sure he saw mine, but still, this was shot and a while ago, so it really, it really wouldn't matter if he saw my video or not. Yeah. But both videos, both visuals to the song are Hollywood noir. Yeah. Like to the that team, era of Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, yeah bro. For sure. And I'm just like, I was so like moved. I'm like, uh, so oh. he had like the same kind of vision as you did. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah. When he was like shooting. They linked up. And I never saw it. I never saw what he shot. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it was cool. So, yeah, man, um, Lost, it's on our on the YouTube, New Smoke TV. Uh, definitely some good other visuals on there, uh, other works from 1-2. He did a, a mashup with uh, Dragon Ball Z. Mm. Dope hip-hop all the way. Shortstop, we got all, the, all his best playlists on there as well. We got some some cool breeze that's my man he's gonna bring a lot more to the table um but yeah man I, a lot of good content is the foundation so now i, I just want to keep adding to it yeah dude. and I, i've been i'm looking I've forward been focusing to on that one i'm the, looking the forward tube. to seeing uh your next creations thanks brother and i'm um, always here to support you too we got to make a video we have to do a video for moments i'm down dude. that's yeah that's my next video for moments and then i'm gonna start that's on my next song. project yeah. I'm going to do like a love thing. Yeah. I'm going to go there. <laughs> Be a, uh, like Max, or no, D'Angelo. Ever seen that video when he's naked? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I'd always change that when it would come on and like in TRL or whatever. <laughs> yeah, baby. But yeah, brother. It was uh, just one shot, just him all ripped up and yeah. shit. Yeah. Uh, that's my, that's what I'm going that's what for. That's what you got to do. You're all ripped the, right That's now, what I'm going it? for, now. You know, I got to pump it. You traitor puppy. <laughs> Whatever, uh, <laughs> but yeah, brother, I I really enjoy this space you've held for me, and like we only got into our like beginning origin, you know, we got up to 2010, yeah. To be honest, and then I, I skipped to 2014, kind of just jumped a little bit, just yeah, a little bit. I, we got to do a part two. Let's do it, dude. Right, I'm down. We'll set it up. Soon. I'm really down because um, yeah, we got to catch everybody up, and then what what we what we were doing from 2014 to it's now, just because there's so many like feelings and details that you have to talk about oh yeah like, and it brings up it all that you know yeah, yeah and i sure. like the way you break it down too it's, you know I, I that's how i like to hear i always ask i'm always asking my girlfriend like what do you mean by that and yeah. she's like what i said no but like what do you mean like i'm trying I, to i didn't like it because yeah i'm trying to understand like, yeah. you know what i mean and, and like hearing there's just so much details and so much shit like like i didn't know really like i've always known about your wrestling but even that, I feel like we could get even deeper. Oh, bro! I, but you know what I mean, like. I mean, but it was boom. interesting to hear some 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 of the details. It's in a that film, bro. Too. That wrestling. Yeah. And yeah, we got to get to like 
the music even more and all that yeah. but i know you gotta go soon and i just want to say thank you no so for much, sure thank bro. you i don't mean to cut us short too like that went really fast yeah now, I, it was fun, dude. That was, that's what I'm done. I'm like, bro, we got to do two. Yeah. We're, we're not done. No. <laughs> but, um, yeah, G, thank you so much for having me. Like, and, 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 again, holding space for me. Thank you. I fucking love you. Appreciate you. Love you. You're, this is my brother. Buddha Man. Buddha Martinez music. New Smoke. Please check him out. One of the most creative men I know. And it's always thank been a, a pleasure for me to be able to work with Buddha Man and get out there and grind with him and there's gonna be like many more brother. throughout the years. Damn right. I, I feel the same. Thank you, brother. Nice. Nice. Perception production. Perception podcast.